working on. Um, so importing images or figures into um, from other applications, you can copy and paste um, generally straight into the, the onto your artboard, um, but you can also place the images or import them. So in Illustrator, we'll call place them. So you have a file uh, place. <clears throat> When you place it, it'll give you an option to uh, to link the um, image or chart or whatever you're working with. So if you do that, you'll have a live link back to the original file, um, which is there. So particularly with um, you know charts and graphs, this can be very useful. You placed it in there, maybe you you know resized it, positioned it, or whatever. At some point in time, you go back and you update the original data, where you don't have to go back and do all that work again. The the whatever changes you made and saved to that original file um, will be um, reflected in Illustrator. Um, it will potentially give you, um, you know, if you if you if you've got the Illustrator document open and then you go back and change that file, the um, original file, and save it, it'll let you know that you know there's a problem with the link. Um, usually, you can just update the link, assuming you haven't actually moved or deleted that original file. Um, that being said, before you publish it or share the document with someone else, you'll need to embed those those images, those files. So if you don't embed them and the person you're sharing with it doesn't have access to wherever you stored the original file, they're not going to see anything on, they're not going to see have access to that. So um, when you click on the file, in the control panel at the top of the page, you'll see a bunch of options here. The main one is you want to um, click embed. So make sure you embed the files before you um, publish and share the documents. Um, yeah, images that are copied and pasted in um, from the clipboard um, won't be linked. So those um, any changes you make to documents like that, um, if you then go back and change the original, you'd have to come back, recopy and paste that in and do it. So, so working with linked files, um, you know, particularly in the draft stages, can save you a lot of work not having to go back and, and um, redo everything again if you change the original mm -hmm. file. Um, all right, so a note on working with images. So Nick talked about um, uh, you know, the importance of adjusting brightness and contrast. Um, is this actually gonna work? Um, so, there should be some text coming up on the side. Um, one thing um, you know to note with working with images is because um, Illustrator is a vector-based program. You know the images you're working with are, are raster-based images, um, so the you know the pixel images. Um, so you, you're going to want to adjust the brightness and contrast, colors, all of that sort of stuff. You're going to want to have all that set before you bring the images into um, Illustrator. So um, um, I'm sure there should be uh, text on this somewhere. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so it's a vector-based program. Um, so when you're bringing the images in, um, you want to bring them in at at least the size that you're going to have them at, if not, or larger. So if you bring the image in, um, you know, a nice small image in, and then you expand it, you know, you zoom it out in, in Illustrator, your resolution um, um, will be reduced. Um, so, um, yeah, bright and brightness and contrast will be adjusted before you bring the images in. Um, when you're putting a panel of figures together, um, you'll, you want to adjust the brightness and contrast consistently across that panel. So if you've got, you know, control, mutant or treated, untreated, that sort of thing. If you're adjusting the brightness and contrast differently, um, you can potentially create, you know, misleading results. So um, what this video was sort of going through um, was, um, was, a, was essentially that process. So in, um, and so part of this is, sort of showing how, um, you know, typically if you're creating a panel of images, you want the images, you know, you can, your different treatment groups to be the same size or you want to, you capture the same region from each. 
So an easy way to do that in Fiji is if you create a region of interest in one of your images, um, and then you add that to the ROI manager, you can then um, basically apply that same ROI to your second image. So open your second image, click the ROI, and you'll have um, a region of interest the exact same size. You can then move that around, you know, find a different, you know, region or cells or whatever you want to cluster, um, copy, I should say. Um, if you then want to duplicate those images, you know, the ROIs, um, you can essentially, you know, crop your images so you have the exact same size. So in terms of adjusting the brightness and contrast, um, if we look at the brightness and contrast, the histogram here, um, so we go into one of the channels, we adjust the brightness and contrast um, until we're happy with the, picking the right image, um, until we're happy with what we see. If you click on the set um, icon down here, um, we'll see you in a second. I do apologize, some of these videos probably go a little bit faster than I wanted them to, some of them maybe not as fast. So here we're still adjusting each channel. So, there. Yep, okay. so if you click set, I'll just pause it there. Um, you'll have this option to propagate to all other channels. So if you've got, you know, your two or three or however many panels open, you can then propagate those brightness and contrast settings to your other images. And then you'll have um, all your images will have the exact same, use the exact same histogram. So, um, and that, you know, just make sure that you're giving consistent um, results, uh, consistent displays of your images. All right. So, oops, going too far now. All right. So a little more on working with images. So when you're creating an image panel, this is probably a little bit redundant from the previous one. So um, in this case, we've got a you know multi-channel image. Um, as Nick was saying, quite often for your single channel images, you want to put those in as grayscale. It's a little bit easier for people to see the differences in brightness and contrast in grayscale. It also eliminates any issues that you might have with um, people with um, you know colorblind issues. Uh, uh, vision problems. Um, you know, in this case, we're going to add the scale bar to the composite image. Um, now, one thing, um, so there's a couple of different ways to deal with scale bars with these images. So in this case, um, we have, um, so we're converting that composite image to an RGB image and then importing that. So when you do that, that essentially locks the scale bar to the image. So the the, you know, the image that we've copied in, the scale bar is a part of that image you've copied in. So, you know, whatever changes you make to this image will be made to the scale bar as well. Some journals will want you to keep the scale bar as a separate um, editable item. Um, so again, you'd need to check the journal specifications as to how they want to handle that. Now, in this case, because the scale bar is locked to that image, we can resize that image. Um, now, when you do that, you want to hold shift as you resize it so that you're keeping the proportions consistent. Um, you know, warping the image. Um, once you resize the first image, if you look at the properties panel for that image, you'll get the width and height of that image. So we can then essentially make sure again that they're, we're um, linking our, our height and width of the images, and then you can apply the exact same height and width, or you know, pick one of them, whichever is easiest apply the same height or width um, properties to your other images. So then they're all being scaled identically um, and you can um, then arrange them in your image um, for the final thing. Um, again, this was supposed to have text that was, I thought when I set this up, I, uh, I thought I'd linked the text to the, um, um, to the, bookmarks in the videos, but that doesn't seem to be working. Anyway, all right. Um, so in this this one, um, you know, we've got an image that, um, you know, 
where the angle of, you know, of the image is not quite what we want. So we want to rotate that. Now, again, you can rotate the images in, um, in Fiji or another application, and that's generally recommended. The problem you have sometimes with something like this. So if you rotate this and then you put it into a, like a square um, field of view, you might have, you find yourself, you might have some corners that are sort of cropped yeah. off. So, you know, you'll have this black background around your image and you'll have a corner or a couple of corners of your image where, you know, because you've rotated, the shape is no longer perfectly square or rectangular. And so you'll have um, some corners you'll see in a second. So um, this is gonna show you how to deal with that in Fiji using clipping, um, clipping masks. So, um, so essentially, um, so we're copying the image in this case. Now we're copying it first without the scale bar in this case. So the advantage of copying this without the scale bar is that it'll have the scale bar as a separate element in our figure. Um, so when we rotate the image, the scale bar won't be rotated with it. So in this case, I'm using the wand tool to select the scale bar and copy that over as well. So now we have the image and the scale bar in Illustrator as separate options. We're going to group those together. So now when we rescale the image, we're rescaling the image in the scale bar um, in the same way. Um, now to create a clipping mask, we're going to create a a region of interest, a square shape in this case, or a rectangular shape in this case. Um, just doing a little more imagery sizing to make sure it fits what we want. So once you're happy with the size of the image, um, going to um, ungroup it, um, ungroup the image in the scale bar, and we're going to move the scale bar out of the way. So now um, to create the clipping mask, you want to take that, in this case, the rectangle that you've created. So that's, this is where you know, our image is going to fit into. So you're going to take that, place it in front of the, the image that you want, select both of them together, and then, oh, well, that shot over fairly quickly. Um, um, if you select them both together and click right click it, you'll have an option um, um, to create clipping mask. And so, see if I can. That. Um, anyway, if, if you right click it, um, one of the options will be called create clipping mask. And um, what that will do is essentially crop the image to fit inside that box that you, you drew. And so now if you um, double click on the image, you can rotate it. I mean, you could rescale it if you want, but again, you don't want to do that without having the, the scale bar linked to it. Um, but so in this case, we're going to rotate the image until um, and reposition it so that our brain is, you know, sitting nice and straight. Um, but so this is where you see, you know, you've got those corners where we no longer have um, um, black background. So once we're happy with the position of it in there, um, we're going to hit escape to, to get out of our image manipulation. And we can see these corners where we don't have background. If we select the background tool for that shape, um, and we can use the eyedropper tool and basically apply the background to it. So we're essentially putting our image on a black background. So, um, and then we can put our scale bar back in place. <clears throat> All right, move forward. All right, any questions?